ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك لا إله إلا الله له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك يا الله please open the hearing channels of our hearts to your dhikr of what we recited from surah al-shura Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces those who have iman faith and who rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala الذين آمنوا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون these people, and then he begins to describe them with things that are practical in life as to what they do. Many beautiful things, of which وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ Of their characteristics in life, these people who rely on Allah Azza wa Jal, these people who have Iman, one of the practical characteristics is if they are angry, they forgive. وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوا هُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ If they are angry, they forgive. Which means they do not actualize their anger by words or by deeds. They forgive. And I want to take this opportunity, inshaAllah ta'ala, to leave you tonight with a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi in this spirit that Iman in the Qalb as we said many times transforms our khuluq our inner image and that inner image will be actually uh, dictating the way we use our tongue and our limbs and our senses in ways that are beautiful such as the one I just mentioned from the Quran and there is much more he said وسلم, in an authentic hadith some of you have heard this part of the hadith before, uh, indeed. مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Number one, practical consequences of that beautiful tawheed and the beautiful akhlaq. What is it? Number one, a person who uh, offers relief to a person in grief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will offer such person relief of grief in the day of resurrection. We do that for someone in this dunya, Allah will relieve us from much burdens and much grief on the day of resurrection when everybody would wish that he or she would give all the wealth of the world combined of all times to be forgiven by Allah on that day and to be given respite and a break Allah will do that simply if we in this dunya we were of those who did what we could did our best when we see and when we know someone in grief someone in sorrow someone in, in hardship kurba and we help that person be relieved from that second وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْسِرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Consistent with the first one and whosoever brings some ease to someone in hardship whatever that hardship is physical, financial, emotional, intellectual, social, collective you know, whatever, family wise whatever that difficulty job wise whatever that difficulty it is man yassar ala mu'sirin allah azza wa jalla as a reward Listen, allah is kareem allah will will grant ease for this person from hardships in dunya and in akhirah subhanallah sometimes we say i don't deserve all of this sometimes first of all it is always the grace of allah azza wa jalla but maybe because sometimes you did something good like that and you forgot it, well, alhamdulillah, that's good to forget that we did good and you should never forget that we did evil. 
It's good that you forget that you do good. But Allah will always reward in dunya and in akhirah. Especially when there is sincerity. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا Thirdly, سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah Akbar. And the person who satar, in other words, does not expose the faults, the faults of somebody else, of a Muslim especially. Don't expose them, especially if those persons did that hiding and you never know, they could repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And they did not go out in public and do that. And they did something wrong. They used improperly their eyes, or they used improperly their tongue, or they used improperly, you know, their some of their resources and the gifts from Allah Azza wa Jal, and they didn't do anything of public harm. A word, a mistake, a thumb. And you saw that. Don't expose. If you don't expose, Allah, Allah is not interested in exposing people. You are interested. Human beings, human beings are interested in exposing one another. And they say, well, Allah wants us to do that. No, Allah doesn't want you to do that. Allah wants you to be kind, to be forgiving, not to expose those who have not done something in public or their harm did not extend to society such as they didn't kill and so on and so forth. Don't expose them. And if you don't do that out of kindness, out of love for Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will also cover your faults. Will not expose you on the day of judgment. When on the day of judgment, as Allah tells us in the Quran even, that Allah will expose some people in front of everybody, in front of all the world. This is what that person has done in that moment, and in the second, and we can see it played back in those with Qudrat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala played back like in three dimensions in front of you. But if we do not expose, Allah promises not to expose us. This means that our deen, our deen is not interested in fadiha. Our deen is not interested in vengeance. Our deen is interested in beautiful akhlaq, in rahmah, in benevolence, in ihsan. And if you do that, Allah will do that to you. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا Especially a Muslim. سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ In one hadith it is said that Allah Azza wa Jal, for some people, He will bring each individual, again, Allah owns time. And then, some, as you know, ibad, they will go to Jannah without any discussion without any investigation without any this is what you did and this is what you didn't do bila hisab ya rab and some allah azza wa jal will bring them and will they will face him in inverted commas bila mithal and then he will tell that abd that person him or her Ya Abd, this is what you did, this is what you did, this is what you did, this is what you did. And then he will be enumerating that to the Abd, and the Abd would say, I am done. Imagine the fear. For that Abd, Allah will say, and Ya Abdi, I did not expose you in dunya. And I shall not expose you in akhirah. I have forgiven you. Some ibad will be like that. But the stress of being told that's what you did. People who live in this dunya, who love Allah and know Allah, that they don't want, even if Allah has forgiven them. May Allah help us enter Jannah without hisab. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, والله في عب في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخيه. In terms of practical consequences, Allah shall continue to be in support of His servant as long as the servant is in support to his brother or his sister, or her sister or her brother. Subhanallah. We don't pay attention to these things. We try and handle it to remind ourselves. 
Salah, Salm, Dhikr, beautiful. And you do these things? You're very special. You're very special. As long as you are lending support to someone in whichever way, however minute or small or insignificant it may appear to you, it is grand in the scale of Allah Azza wa And Allah will continue to help you. Actually, if we help somebody, we are helping ourselves. And you never know when that happens and how. You never know. لِلَّهِ فِي خَلْقِهِ شُؤُونٌ وَأَسْرَارٌ Allah Azza wa Jal, in His creation, He has so many secrets and so many subtleties and so many wonders of which we are completely unaware. And then He continues to say, صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وما سلك عبد طريقا يلتمس فيه علما إلا سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة and anyone who undertakes a way, a direction, an orientation in order to pursue ilm, knowledge knowledge that is pleasing to Allah عز وجل you take a path to do that يلتمس to seek knowledge Allah will ease in for that person a path to paradise. Ajib. You're struggling, you're taking a path of so many years or so, including financial hardships, including all whatever, for ilm, for the sake of ilm, to lead to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah will also provide for you things that you will do to lead you to Jannah. He will facilitate for you, for us, things that will lead us to Jannah. How often, really, we want to do beautiful things, but we don't find the energy. Sometimes because of our dhunub. Sometimes because our sins load us and hold us back. And we are not given a push by Allah Azza wa Jal because we deserve that. But if we do certain other things, by Allah Azza wa Jal, we would deserve that He gives us a push. And He shows us a way. And He eases for us a way to Jannah. Then it, we find it easy to wake up for Fajr. We find it easy to come to the Masjid. We find it easy to forgive. We find it easy to give. We find it easy to help, to be benevolent. And when we find good things hard and difficult, that's a sort in itself, my dear sisters and brothers of punishment from Allah Azza wa Where Allah is leaving us to us, as we mentioned last night. But Allah Azza wa if we do something khair, He will also provide some way to khair for us. He will ease it for us. So in this case, to seek a path for ilm, Allah will open for you ease inside of you and a path to paradise, to Jannah. And then he says a few other things. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the end of that hadith, he says, وَمَنْ أَبْطَأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ This is, a, this is a, like a proverb. You must learn it. مَنْ أَبْطَأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ لَمْ مَنْ أَبْطَأَ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ The person who is held back by his own deeds, his lineage shall not help him. Did you hear that? The person, if our deeds are not beautiful, they are ugly, no matter what lineage we have, of this is the son of this and this is the daughter of that and of you know hasab and nasab that nasab will not help you he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam if our deeds are ugly our beautiful nasab will not make ugly deeds beautiful they will remain ugly and it will hold us back it will hold us back that's the end of this hadith Therefore, this hadith is emphasizing that we do good. And if our lineage is noble and we do good, Allahu Akbar, that's double reward. And if our lineage 
is beautiful and we do bad, that's worst of jeopardies. Because noble lineage requires that we do noble deeds. And if we have a noble lineage and our deeds are ugly, Allah will hold us to account double. Allah says to the mothers of the believers themselves, their noble lineage, they are the wives of Rasulullah المؤمنين, If you do good, your rewards will be multiplied. If you do evil, you will, your punishment will be multiplied. Because of the lineage. Like a person who commits dhamb in Texas is terrible. But if you commit them in the haram of Allah Azza wa Jal, that's worse. Multiple jeopardies, more zunub, more punishment. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and guard us and help us, inshallah ta'ala, be of those who internalize iman and the beautiful values of tawheed and beautiful akhlaq and that in our lives we show, we strive at least, we strive, I and you make commitment and make a commitment to strive to be like that. That beauty inside, Ya Allah, grant us beauty inside and help us externalize that beauty outside of us. May Allah bless and reward you all. Please keep me in your du'a. I shall be traveling again for some, uh, uh, again, things that I do here. I'm going to be traveling and doing it somewhere else this time overseas. And I'll be back, inshallah ta'ala, in about 10 days. And I will see you, bi'ithnillah, then. And I leave you with these, inshallah ta'ala. And keep me in your du'a. Assalamu alaikum wa